open book And as I glance back through the pages Life's never easy all the time The hills you climb Often lead nowhere Of ups and downs I've had my share That's what life is all about Some mild acclaim And thinking of it gives me pleasure And I've had some stress The scars remain When Lady Luck gave me short measure When things went wrong I'd fake a smile But that's my style, cause I've been around, and having been around, I've found, that's what life is all about. Except the barbs and lances When I look back I can't forget The friends I've met And the things they've done I thank them all It's been great fun As for me I have no doubt what life is all about the outstanding career of Merlin Olson which may or may not be coming to an end this afternoon here on the frozen turf in Bloomington Minnesota Irv and I have talked about Chuck Knox's decision to go for that field goal but there was a play there where the Rams might have gone ahead, and that was the end around with Ron Jesse. We're going to pay particular attention to this play because Irv and I both commented that we thought Jesse might have been across, but the officials were right there. Now, here comes 81. Mack is out in front, going for the goal line, and it looked like he bounced in, but you can't fault that official, folks. He had position, which is all a coach will ask for. Hilgenberg with that great stand-up play, stopped Hayden, and now the play that turned the game around. How important the kicking game is in pro football. Nate Allen, formerly of San Francisco with the block, and there goes Bobby Bryant, who way back in the preseason didn't even know if he'd be playing this year because of another broken arm. And it was 7-0 after the extra point. And the guy who's played every game for the Vikes since their inception, Jim Marshall, almost had a touchdown as he bats down that third down pass. And Rusty Jackson, who's going to have nightmares after the last couple of weeks, has one blocked there by Blair. But again, the Rams' defense came on and played extremely well, holding Tarkenton on three downs, Freddie Cox kicking a field goal of 25 yards, and that made it 10 all. I'll tell you, Irv, there's another uh, factor to consider, and that is the performance of Jeff Seaman. There's no doubt that Minnesota needs him on defense. They were able to stop Capaletti and McCutcheon right up the middle when he came in. He has been a factor. This game is not yet over, and the NFL Today will continue on CBS in just a moment. You know... We're glad to be here, too, and that's a nice Minnesota welcome for Tom Brookshire and myself. This, of course, is Thomas. What do you think about the first half? Only one statistic that you bother with, uh, turnovers. Zero for Minnesota and four for the Los Angeles Rams. And I'd like to add one thing about Merlin Olsen. 
Norm Van Brocklin once said, Merlin Olsen is a man. And as the Dutchman can only say it, I think that pretty well takes care of it. That's a pretty good tribute from him. Uh, watching both the, the Vikings and the Rams come back on the field time, we had said earlier that perhaps by halftime the field would be hard. Uh, the way they're running now, the way it looks now, it still seems to be okay, despite the 14-degree temperature. Yeah. Before the game's over, it's going to be colder. I think there are two receivers that will be big factors. I think Ron Jesse will be as the last play of the half, and I also think Sammy White has been uh, covered right now, and they haven't had the ball a lot, but I think the two big receivers are still capable of very large plays on this field. As time winds down, Bud Grant had said before the game, the Minnesota coach had said before the game, we would like to be able to control the Rams' running attack, so they have to pass, and as time goes down, they're going to have to throw it. So that's exactly what he's planned. And the scoreboard, of course, takes care of that. Now it's going to be a catch-up situation. And you know the last time a first-year quarterback ever started a playoff game? 1950, and it was Otto Graham. And that's where Pat Hayden is today. You didn't give me a chance to answer. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> There's the stats of the first half. Like we say, you can forget time of possession and all that. And the one that's not on there, the turnover chart, is four for Los Angeles. And Minnesota has a big zero, and that's a very positive zero. Look at that bottom figure, too. 19 minutes in possession for Los Angeles. Nine for Los Angeles. Nine plus a few seconds. Uh, and so Tom Dempsey. His only action so far. That's the turnovers that Tom Brookshire was talking about a minute ago. Tom Dempsey's only action so far was to have his field goal attempt blocked and turned into a Minnesota touchdown. Now kickoff. Leonard Willis and Sammy White. Willis in the middle, and it's going to be Willis that handles it. At the goal line, he stepped on it, and out he steps. Leonard Willis. Outside the 30 to the 33. A good effort. Dwight Scales was the first guy to hit him. Did you hear all that business about the, the benches? Before the game started, the Rams were supposed to have imported some heated benches. From Philadelphia. From Philadelphia. The Vikings said, nope. You use the same equipment we use. And it's a first down, Minnesota. The Vikings lead it 10 nothing as targeted. Hit to Robert Miller. And Miller was hit almost as soon as he took the exchange by Isaiah Robertson. There's the Los Angeles bench. They do have some heating facilities over there, including those big gloves. It is a chore and a challenge to be able to stay warm. The Vikings don't have gloves and all, and they say, if Bud Grant said, if they win the Super Bowl, they'll have the whole offseason to worry about whether you let them wear gloves next year or not. He might, he said, if they win the Super Bowl, let them have heat. He even doesn't even let the ball boy wear gloves. Second and seven. Miller comes in motion, and Foreman gets the carry. He breaks into the secondary. Away from Simpsons. Foreman at the 30. Foreman down at the 4, at the 1, by Monty Jackson, who caught him. Chuck Foreman. Thirteen touchdowns during the regular season, and this had to be one of his great bursts because he left people and only had one man really to juke and get there. Chuck Foreman's longest run of the year had been 46 yards. That one was 62. Watch the move he makes on the secondary man right here. Simpson, a great tackler, never had but a sweeping shot at it. And it's over right now. Rod Perry is the guy who came from the opposite side of the field and made the tackle. It's first and goal, Minnesota, at the two. Miller and Foreman, the running back. Straight ahead and does not score. The whole Ram defensive line. Rod Perry came out of left center field and made a tremendous tackle. A 62-yard run by Chuck Foreman. In the opening seconds of period number three, almost put this game out of sight. But that's a good defense you're looking at. And the Vikings are not in yet. Chuck Foreman is now. And standing, went in standing and gave the ball to the official like I do this every day. Number 44. Here is the touchdown again behind Yerian White. 
and Boyd. And he will come out standing. 67 yards in four plays, and Fred Cox with Paul Kraut holding makes it 17 zip in favor of the Minnesota Vikings. The Rams have their work cut out for them now. It's 17-0 with 12.51 left to play in the third period. Cox against the wind, kicking off. Vikings lead 17-0. 13 at the 10. Out behind the wedge, looking for some place to go and can't find it. Patrick, I'm wondering if James Harris, a stronger throwing quarterback, might not be getting to loosen up and think about coming in. The Rams can no longer worry about offensive rushing yardage. They have to get some points. Here is the longest run. No, this is a touchdown. I beg your pardon. By Chuck Foreman behind Ed White. The 62-yard run by Chuck Foreman that set up that touchdown is the longest of his pro career. What a playoff player he is. At the right time, huh? First down Rams, they trailed 17-0. Matt Hayden is still the quarterback. And Hayden is gonna throw. For Harold Jackson, he slid and couldn't hang on. Paul Krause was the nearest Viking defender, but Jackson was open. Remember that Hayden is getting excellent pass protection. He did have the one sack early by Eller, but he did a little semi-roll left, and he did not have a lot of pressure. The ball underthrown right on the NFL shield at midfield. Twelve thirty-five left in the third period. Seventeen nothing Minnesota over Los Angeles. Jesse right, Jackson left. Hayden forced to scramble by Eller. Duck tumble and Eller takes him down. And almost got the ball. Here is that long run by Chuck Foreman with Miller in motion. I want to see where Rod Perry comes from to tackle him from behind. That's one of the great defensive plays. Now you've got a horse race and watch for Perry to come out of nowhere and make one of the incredible defensive plays we'll ever see, I'll tell you. Two plays later, Chuck Foreman scored to make it 17-0. Vikings over the Rams. Minnesota trying to go to their fourth Super Bowl. They've never won. They lost to Kansas City. They lost to Miami, and they lost to Pittsburgh. Looks like they might have another try. Here is Pat Hayden with good protection, firing, deflected. Carl Eller has made six unassisted tackles. As the Ram punting unit comes on, Bobby Bryant was the defender that time. Rusty Jackson comes out. And James Harris must be wondering when he's going to get his cape off. Chuck Knox standing alongside Pat Hayden. And that idea that Tom Brookshire just mentioned must be in his mind right now. Rusty Jackson averaging just over 31 yards a kick in this contest. Saw the center. A long count. They're coming again. Off the side of Jackson's foot. And out of bounds at the 46, where Minnesota will take it over. The Vikings smell victory. You can see that coming. Rusty Jackson, Patrick, doesn't have fingernails any longer. They're all the way down. He's had a lot of time on the sidelines to think about those snaps and those punts. 17-0, Minnesota over Los Angeles. On Saturday, January 8th, the all-new CBS Sports Spectacular premieres, featuring Nadia Comaneci of Romania, winner of three gold medals at the Olympics in Montreal, competing for the first time since then in the Chunichi Cup from Japan. That's Saturday, January 8th, for the all-new CBS Sports Spectacular. Right in the middle of the picture, with the wool hat on, is James Harris, a backup Ram quarterback. He and Ron Jaworski. Both, of course, would like to have a shot, but it's been Pat Hayden all the day. Minnesota first down at the Ram 45. Carpenter, outside Miller. Miller struggled. Jack Reynolds made the tackle, but Miller on a fine individual effort. It's about the 25th catch. He's had one more today than I recall. Here's the rush being put on. 
Reynolds on the blitz. An unload job that takes care of blitzing situations. An easy, safe pass. And Miller was tough to get down. Look who else is over there in that pursuit. Number 74, of course, Merlin Olsen. But Nevertheless, a seven-yard pickup on that pass from Tarkenton to Miller. So we'll make it second and three. Chuck Foreman again. Foreman struggles close to a first down. Dave Elmendorf came up and made the tackle. That was a beeline straight to the weak side of the formation and trying to get the first, and he came off a close. Here's Foreman behind Miller. I watched tapes of him getting 200 yards rushing against the Eagles one day. Darnest thing I've ever seen. You think you have him, and you're never quite sure. He got close enough so that the chains are out, or being brought out, to measure. First down, Minnesota. The Vikings have blocked 15 kicks of various kinds during the season. Two of them today and 13 coming in. One of them, of course, by Nate Allen was picked up by Bobby Bryant, a field goal attempt by Tom Dempsey. And Bobby Bryant ran it 90 yards for the first touchdown of this game. It is Minnesota 17, Los Angeles nothing. Rashad is foot to the left. Sammy White, who hasn't caught a pass all day. Here's Miller on a misdirection play. Close to another Viking first down. Stopped by Dave Elmendorf. Merlin Olsen was back there as well. Miller comes in with a 4.3 rushing average. He doesn't get a lot of notoriety because of number 44, but 35 looks like a pretty solid guy. Yes, he does. Nine yards by number 35 on that last carry. 17-0, Minnesota over Los Angeles. 10 minutes and 10 seconds left to play third period. And you better get those receivers covered up. Gambling time for Francis. He doesn't do it. It is Foreman who breaks one, breaks another. It's a Minnesota first down at the 20. Bill Simpson, the safety man, had to stop Chuck Foreman. It's not a bad gamble to hand it off to <laughs> Chuck Foreman. Reputation coming out of college when he was at Miami that he fumbled the football. Well, that's the one thing you don't see Chuck Foreman do anymore. All you see him do is get the yardage when you need it, and the Vikings needed it today. A first and ten for Minnesota at the Ram 20. Been a happy day for Bud Grant, but you'd never know it by looking at him. <laughs> Quite an athlete himself. Here's Miller. Breaks a couple of tackles. He hit Isaiah Robertson right at the line of scrimmage, but nevertheless got five yards before Jim Youngblood could bring him down. There is Robert Miller. And his uh, partner in that backfield, Foreman, is now 104 yards on 10 carries. And Merlin slow getting up. Merlin Olson departing right now. His place being taken by Mike Fanning. The big six foot six inch. Second year man from Notre Dame. Olsen goes out. Fanning comes in. Fanning against Ed White. Has got to uh, crack the ice on the field. That's got to be some thunder. That matchup. White's about 260 as Tom mentioned before. And one of the strongest men in the league if not the strongest. Clock ticking away. Just over eight and a half left third period. It is Miller. With nothing going on this time. And Mike Finning, who just came in, did the bulldog job. 270 pounds of it. Merlin Olsen's replacement. Yes, the Rams uh, are going to have an excellent replacement when Merlin decides not to. Watch number 79. Now he spins. He's six, foot, he's six foot five and a half. And watch this move. A little extracurricular. Woo. Fought that pressure like a good tackle should. Eight minutes left, third period, as Tarkenton dropped. Intercepted. In the end zone by Monty Jackson. Tarkenton threw it up in the direction of Rashad and White. 
Somebody broke a pattern. Somebody was supposed to run to the flag and ran the wrong pattern and ran through it early and an error. Monty Jackson with the interception gives the Rams possession. They trailed by 17. I really look forward to that show. The conquest of Mount Everest, the assault on Mount Everest. From what I've seen, it is terrific. Here's Lawrence McCutcheon, broke one. Outside the 25 to the 26. You know, you don't get out of the team function, but McCutcheon is watching a great player in Chuck Foreman today. And don't think that number 30 isn't thinking about, this is sort of a man-to-man -man job. I am a great running back, too. There is still that personal thing inside the team structure. They are just about the same size, as a matter of fact. And almost as effective as one another. Right. Los Angeles second and six is Pat Hayden. Will throw. And now he will run. He throws deep. Caught by Jackson. And Harold Jackson to the 40. Out of bounds at the 35. What a play by Pat Hayden. I guess you don't become a, a road scholar for not having gray matter. A super roll out and then reversed it. Watch, watch the block he picks up on Carl Eller now. He tries to sprint outside of it. This is pre-planned pre now. Now he rolls back Aller Fran target and gets Eller off his back and throws on the run like he's back at West Covina High. Good catch and a very dangerous receiver in Harold Jackson. Harold Jackson chased by Hilgenberg and finally out of bounds. It is a first down Los Angeles. James Harris is starting to loosen behind the Ram bench. Pat Hayden just picked up a first down, his longest completion of the day. The fake is to Capoletti. The throw is to McCutcheon. At the 30, he is wrestled down by Hilgenberg. I think Hayden wanted to go deeper to the deep receiver at the last minute, thought, I think I'll just place this in McCutcheon's hands. Watch McCutcheon swing fan, Look outside, check back inside. Now hoping the linebacker has deserted him. And Hilgenberg has been watching him all the time. McCutcheon, one of the many Ram players who are wearing gloves. Hayden is not one of them. That's his book as far as throwing is concerned. Second and six. Hayden gives to McCutcheon. McCutcheon barrels inside the 25 to the 24. And up for a Ram first down, stopped by Jeff Wright. Six minutes and 18 seconds left to play in the third period. It's Minnesota 17, Los Angeles nothing. And remember that Harold Jackson, as fleet as he is, has a counterpart in Ron Jesse, number 81, who can jump over the goalpost to catch it. Uh, I don't really mean that, but he is close to being able to do that. Uh, here's Ron Jesse coming to the right. Number 81, of course. Ram first down. Jesse starts in motion and now stops and shuffles. Hayden looking for some place to go. Now gets out of the trap. Still looking. Still out of the trap. Being chased by Page. He's the closest one. Hayden throws. McCutcheon has it at the 10. Hayden did one heck of a job again. And nobody was downfield. His lineman stayed in there and battled him on the line of scrimmage and did not get caught going downfield. The offensive line cannot operate any better than they're operating for Hayden right now. That ball, the nose of the ball, just about on the 10-yard line as McCutcheon makes this reception and goes down. Those gloves must work. Looks like it. He's held on. That's what McCutcheon did. But the nose of the ball almost touching the 10. I am really not sure, but I think they can make a first down without scoring. It's that close to the 10. McCutcheon. To the five. Touchdown, oh. McCutcheon. What a run. Oh. Lawrence McCutcheon ran over everybody. The last guy he shuffled into was Jeff Wright. But it was like a welcome mat. There is James Harris watching. What Watch a super, that touchdown. What a wow. super guy, though. Harris is working with Pat Hayden. I've watched it. Inside action. Williams making the block. And McCutcheon doing a lot of this on his own. Lawrence. You have arrived in the second half. I think you'd be safe to say that he wanted to score. 
Tom Dempsey to try the extra point with Steve Priest holding. McCutcheon has 102 yards and 19 carries. Foreman 104. Extra point is not good by Dempsey. Wide to the left, it wasn't blocked. And it's 17 to six. That is the ninth extra point this year that Dempsey has missed. And that's gotta hurt. 17-6 with 4.58 left, third period. CBS Sports presents the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day at 2 p.m. Eastern with the undefeated Maryland Terrapins taking on the explosive Houston Cougars. That's the Cotton Bowl, New Year's Day at 2 p.m. Eastern. Tom Dempsey indicating that he's ready to kick. He just missed an extra point. A high kick in the direction of Leonard Willis. At the 12, he takes it. Oof. Wrapped up by Carl Eckern. And a flag goes down. Another one is down all over the place. A large extra point that Tom Dempsey missed. You can start multiplying at home and you'll understand how large it is. Here it is. Dead pull left. Just off the inside of the foot and wide left. Clipping is called against Mark Mullaney. Think That's about that now. Two field goals and you've got suddenly 12 points. And then a touchdown, and you've got 19 points. The chances of a, of a tie game are very remote now. First up. Merlin Olsen back in the Ram defense again. They trail 17-6. Fran Tarkenton, of course, still the Viking quarterback. 4.48 left third period. And he's not resting on any lead. Chuck Foreman made the reception. Did a couple of spin arounds. Isaiah Robertson finally made the tackle. Foreman is awfully difficult to get down. I'm still trying to figure, as I said, my, my Chinese multiplying thing here is broken a little bit. It's frozen. But two touchdowns, and you end up with 20 and 17. You could still get 20-20, perhaps. It could happen. Sammy White. Split to the left. Rashad to the right. Pocket and slip. Foreman again. Foreman struggles and has a Minnesota first down. Isaiah Robertson, one of the close tacklers. And that's an indication, I think, right there, as Tarkenton tried to set up that the field might be getting just a little bit hard. And I wonder about Fran's arm today. I think you're right. He ran into Sutherland, the thrasher, during practice. And he was very quick uh, to get that ball off and all. But on a couple of long throws, he looks like he's tentative to me for what Fran usually does with him. 17-6, Minnesota's lead. With three and a half minutes left, third period. Tarkenton gives to Foreman. Jack Youngblood. Before he gets back to the line of scrimmage, Youngblood makes the tackle. Isolated action of Yerry trying to get an angle on Youngblood and getting nothing of number 85. And again, Foreman's feet went right out from under him. So that part of the field might be getting him just a little bit hard. Second down situation, 12 to go. 17-6, Minnesota. Tarkenton drops and goes. Almost picked off by Rod Perry. Intended for Sammy White. And Perry almost had a clutch interception for Los Angeles. Don't go away. Rams starting to come on a little bit now. And Perry had eight interceptions, the young cornerback from Colorado. And Bud Grant, well, obviously he knows that when you get into a playoff situation, a mistake is magnified like 10 times. And if they made many of them, these two teams wouldn't be here, that's for sure. Jack Youngblood. Oh. Think he's hungry? Arkenton drops. Fred Dreyer from behind. Fumble. And the Rams have it. Jack Youngblood to the 10. Los Angeles football. Tarkenton hit from behind by Dreyer, and Youngblood picked it up. And the, the Rams in good shape. Watch Fred Dreyer's rush. Watch the rush by Dreyer. 
and he stays with it. He goes inside now. He finally has to break. Now he goes outside. Watch the ball pop right up into Youngblood's hands, almost like he was handed the ball off. And he can run. Look at him protect the football. Youngblood out of bounds at the eight. Watch it from another angle. To the right of your screen. Boy, is that dryer quick. Run, Jack, run. And the turnaround's chain. It is first and goal. At the eight-yard line for Los Angeles. 2.41 left third period. McCutcheon and Capaletti behind Hayden. McCutcheon. Inside the five to about the four. Doug Sutherland made the tackle. The Rams go right back where they have been to get here, right up the pipe. Capaletti goes and seals off the outside, and McCutcheon, straight line, and stopped abruptly. It is second and goal at the four as the Rams huddle just outside the 10. Minnesota has their goal line defense in there, an extra lineman. Mark Mullaney, as well as the regular four. Hayden is going to roll right. Nowhere to go. Lost the yard. Young Dick Vermeil, the Eagle coach, talks to the other coaches. He told me that inside the five-yard line, the Vikings are the toughest team in football to score on. Pittsburgh and all of them. Inside the five, the Vikings are all over you. Once before in this contest, Chuck Knox, Los Angeles Rams were close and couldn't score. They had to settle to try a field goal by Dempsey. It was blocked. Bobby Bryant picked it up and went 90 yards for a Viking touchdown. Now it's third and goal at the five. Hayden. Outside Jackson. Touchdown. Oh. Pass interference has been called against Nate Allen. What a catch Harold Jackson makes. Hayden might have thrown that a little too sharply and not lobbed it enough. And Jackson makes an incredible catch. Incredible play. Pass interference was called against Nate Allen. Watch the touchdown. This is usually thrown with a little bit off the ball, and the young quarterback threw it a little early. And Jackson reaches back to catch it on his hip. Harold Jackson. The penalty was against Minnesota, and of course, the Rams refused it. So it's 17-12 now. Remember the other game, the overtime game. Minnesota let 10-0 at the end of three quarters. The Rams roared right back in that one. Tom Dempsey. He missed his other extra point attempt. He's had a field goal block, so he's worried, too. That one is right down the pipe. 17-13 make it. A minute, 15 seconds to go in the third period as you look at Pat Hayden trying to keep warm. The touchdown again. And remember, young Hayden knew that James Harris was thinking about getting ready to come in. The pressure was on. Chuck Knox still obviously concerned, but not quite so much now. His Rams have roared back. 17-13 the score. And they're on the same side of the field with Bud Grant and that crusty bunch of Minnesota guys. Tom Dempsey will kick off. A sack by Dreyer, a fumble by Tarkenton. Recovered by Youngblood, gave the Rams first and eight. First and goal at the eight. Harold Jackson scored on a pass from Pat Hayden. Leonard Willis, right in the middle for Minnesota, ready to accept Tom Dempsey's kickoff. High. It'll be Willis. At the nine. Leonard Willis with some room outside the 30 to the 32 where the Vikings take it over. Kevin McLean made the tackle for Los Angeles. If ever Fran Tarkington needed a great offensive drive, this is the time to pull one out. Minnesota has the football. Los Angeles at the moment has the momentum. Tarkenton breaks the huddle. 17-13 the score. A minute and four seconds left, third period. Miller goes in motion. Tarkenton goes back to pass. Out 
offside for Sammy White, thrown poorly, thrown away. Thrown away poorly. <laughs> That's really bad, isn't it? <laughs> Monty Jackson was close. Here's one to boggle the mind. Babe Ruth made as much as the President of the United States. But to the superstars of today, it would be little more than 10 months. This story and more on 60 Minutes this evening at 7, 6 o'clock Central Time. At the 32, on second down, Tarkenton again throws. And again, misses his receiver. I think it was intended for Robert Miller, but I'm not even sure of that. Again, the arm is not the one that we have normally seen Fran Tarkington have. There's a big, big thing to think about, the poise of a Los Angeles Ram team not scattering and not perhaps going to the backup quarterback, whereas you and I might have, Pat. That's a scene in the Minnesota locker room with that Christmas tree there. I imagine there are 43 tickets to Pasadena with an open return on that. 17-13 the score. Young blood fighting to get away. Almost gets away from Yuri. Tarkenton fires in again. The coverage was good. Tarkenton was hit by Larry Brooks just as he let it go. Youngblood thinks he was held, and I agree. He always does. Let's watch the rush, and they are after Francis Tarkenton. 85 and Yerry. Yerry is a rock and strong at about 265 to 270. Yes, Jack Youngblood, you were held. He almost pulled his helmet off. He got him twice. It's a tough game, isn't it? It's a Neil great Clavo back to punt. It's a great game, too. I'll say. 17-13 score. Flavo hangs one high. Good kick. Bertelson after the signal from Cullen Bryant. And Bertelson got away from one. Finally stopped by Wendlin Hall. And McNeil was down there again, number 54, that made the, the original shot. There's just something about a guy on special teams that takes a different kind of guy. Yeah, a little bit crazy. Yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> you got to really want to play football. Fred McNeil is such a person. Chuck Knox looking on. 36 seconds left. In the third period, 17-13 the score. Hayden to McCutcheon. Good yard. Stopped by Carl Eller. In between the tackles, the Rams live in there with a young offensive line. Tom Mack excluded, but they are excellent in there. Saul, Mack, Para, Big Doug France, who's learning quickly, and Williams, a very solid guy, number 75. It was a seven-yard pickup by McCutcheon. But we'll make it second and three. If you're thinking ahead as the seconds tick away in the third period, the Rams will be operating against the wind in the fourth period. Minnesota will have it with them. That play won't count. They got it called, they got it snapped, but they never got a chance to run it. And so that's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Vikings 17, the Rams 13. We now pause for word from your local station. Being voted the Rams outstanding lineman last year was a great moment for me. But as board member of the Boy Scouts, I've seen boys with severe physical handicaps find a place in scouting. They learn crafts and they study scouting ideals of honor and citizenship. They already know about courage and bravery and show it every day as boys growing into men. Scouting is made possible by your contributions to the United Way. And thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. You're looking at Alan Page who has been handled pretty well so far. By Tom Mack. And Rich Saul. Second and three situation for Los Angeles, the first play of quarter number four. Capaletti gets to the 40, not enough for a first down. Minnesota 17, Los Angeles 13. 
The Vikings at one time led 17 to nothing and looked as if they were just about ready to blow the whole thing open. But the Rams have come roaring back. Matt Hayden is the quarterback. Third and very short. McCutcheon grabbed by Page. He got past the 40. Let's see where they mark it. It's awfully close to a first down. 1188 no shows here at Bloomington and all we can say is we're glad you're watching but if you didn't come to see this one live you missed a little something special football should be seen natural sometimes you know it is a first down watch that last play by Alan Page like a cat what does he move along the line of scrimmage and still strong McCutcheon fought for enough for a first down, and McCutcheon this time was blocking for Capoletti, and Capoletti was hit almost as soon as he got the ball by Doug Sutherland. And guess who? Alan Page. Allen looked like he was in the offensive backfield. He gets off the ball quicker than the offensive linemen do sometime, and they have the count. Ram Bench. Jim Young blood looking on. Jackson left and Jesse right on second and nine. They almost got a throw. Vikings had the blitz going, and the pass was knocked down by the big arm of Carl Eller. Remember, Hayden is not quite six feet tall, and Eller is a lot of six foot five inches tall. The blitz was handled. But Eller had the hands up, and Williams didn't cut him or get those hands down, and you got an INC. Look at him get off the ground. Third down coming up. Los Angeles football. They trail by four. They chase him out of the pocket, and Hayden takes off running. Doesn't get the first down. Wally Hilgenberg and Jeff Wright made sure. And the Rams will have to punt. And Hilgenberg really mashed the young quarterback. The fellow that came from Detroit to Pittsburgh and finally to Minnesota and found a home. Now watch this tackle. Full out, and Hayden's going to get it right now. Hilgenberg with the arm. Right with the clutch, Rusty Jackson with his hands in his pocket. Leonard Willis standing for the Vikings back at the 20. At the 22. Oh. Leonard Willis broke a couple of tackles, but there are too many white shirts around to break the rest of it. The Vikings will take over at the 28. So we have 12 minutes and 27 seconds left in the NFC Championship game between Minnesota and Los Angeles. It's 17-13. 12-27 left to play in the NFC Championship game. The score is Minnesota 17, the Rams 13. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. We have ourselves some contest. Robert Miller, the ball carrier. Jim Youngblood, the tackler. Brent McClanahan played the first offensive series for the Vikings and hasn't been back. Now he's coming in now, and Foreman actually went over to Bud Grant and motioned to get 33 in there for a particular reason, obviously. The Los Angeles bench trying to stay warm. Tarkenton brings him out on second and seven. And drop. Going for the bundle. Didn't get it. Intended for Rashad. Monty Jackson back with him. Monty Jackson cut Rashad off at the pass and made the big guy, the taller man of the two, run through him and got away with it. Says, all right, if you're going to get the ball, you got to go through my jersey to get it. But he was looking up. Bill Simpson was the other Ram who came over to make sure to help out. Sammy White listening to Fran Tarkenton right now in the Minnesota offensive huddle. 17-13. Now 11 minutes and 52 seconds left to play. Got to move the football, and he knows it. 
Watch number 44. Tarkenton wrapped up by Larry Brooks. The sack on Tarkenton by Brooks. He's congratulated by Olsen. He's had a heck of a year. Oh, what a player. And Bud Grant knows that late in the game, the Rams, particularly some of the older veterans, come like mad. Watch the left part of your screen. Goodrum looking for Brooks and doesn't handle it. Larry Brooks with the sack and Neil Clabo. Deep for Minnesota, number 12 with his back to you. Cullen Bryant standing out at the 35 for Los Angeles. His own 35. They're going to try to block it. They don't get it. Good kick by Clabo. Cullen Bryant has got some room. Big Cullen Bryant rumbles out to the 45 where the Rams will take it over. First and 10. The Vikings are calling for clips, but there are no yellow flags down. Steve Craig made the tackle. There's a Viking player injured on that last punt return. We'll check and see who he is. Robert Miller is the guy shaken up. Los Angeles has the football. The lights are on in Minnesota. It's getting that dark feeling, and it's getting colder, okay. and it's getting more intense right where you're watching. And it's only 2.30 in the afternoon. The lights are going to go out for one of these teams very shortly. McCutcheon, and the flag goes down. McCutcheon was tackled by Carl Eller. 11 minutes and 13 seconds left to go in the NFC Championship game. Jim Marshall said holding somebody held on that offensive line. I believe it was called against Tom Mack. He's trying to block Alan Page. I can understand why. Let's listen. Holding. Number 65, offense, first down. Here it is. Mack, and you're behind the offensive guard, trying to take Page out by his shirt. That, ladies and gentlemen, is holding. Right before your eyes. A clinic. 17-13. First down still for Los Angeles. Hayden. Jesse held on a remarkable catch by Jesse. He was popped by Bobby Bryant just after he caught it. There is courage. Ron Jesse plays extremely well against Minnesota. When he was with Detroit, it was the same way. A great athlete from Kansas who's like a 25-foot long jumper, a 6-foot-6 six six high jumper, and he got struck hard by Bobby Bryant. And held on. Second down and two, an 18-yard pickup. Hayden gives to McCutcheon, and McCutcheon is wrapped up. He got away from Eller. Didn't quite get enough for a first down. Got maybe a half yard short. Okay, do you want to have our first crucial play? <laughs> the game was loaded with them, right? But Hayden's got one now. If they ever had a third down conversion ratio of 100%, they better pull it off right. The tumbers better be there this time. A big third down. Less than one. Clock shows now less than 10 minutes left to play. 17-13 Minnesota. It's McCutcheon on the sweep. He has the first down. Oh. A second effort by McCutcheon after he's hit by Seaman and stopped finally by Jeff Wright. I don't know how he made it. I don't either. I know one thing. He stayed lateral. He stayed horizontal and just made it on whatever kind of momentum a great running back has. Dick Jorgensen calling for the officials to bring him across the field and let's measure. Chuck Knox watching closely in the background. Is it touching the line? It's awfully close. It's a first down for Los Angeles. You want to watch it? All right. Watch number 50 and 30. And take it away. That is no slouch as a tackler he broke away from there. That was Jeff Seaman. As good a middle linebacker as there is. And McCutcheon still got the first down. Ball at the Minnesota 45. Jesse and Jackson both flip to the left. 
touch and hit as soon as he got the ball by oh. middle linebacker Jeff Seaman, and that time he made sure. And he is hot because he thought he should have made the other one, and number 50 made no mistake. Watch this tackle. Middle linebacker and a great running back. You watch. Rams break it on second and nine. McCutcheon got only a yard on first down. Block running now with 8.55 left to play. Hayden gets to McCutcheon again. And McCutcheon cuts. Another Ram first down inside the 35. Stopped by Jim Marshall from the opposite side of the field. The Vikings knew what play was called. Bud Brandt's team knew what play was called. And watch the defense start shifting to the left. And the Rams still executed well enough to cut off Sutherland. Capaletti did that. There's Hera outside with a little shoving work. And the defense knew what was coming. That was carry number 26 for Lawrence McCutcheon. He now has 128 yards on the day. First and 10, Los Angeles at the Minnesota 35. Hayden is going to throw. Knocked down incomplete. A big rush by Minnesota. Alan Page having a word with one of the officials back there. He Matt Flair knocked it down. Alan Page and the Thrasher Sutherland thought it was uh, intentional grounding again. But <laughs> Hayden was just throwing that over his shoulder like in the rearview mirror, I'll tell you. Hayden looking over to Chuck Knox again to get the play he wants called. A little bit disgusted with himself right now. Exactly eight minutes left on the clock. Rams have all three timeouts left, and so do the Vikings. Second down. Capoletti, nothing doing. Okay, big play, America. You want a, a real big uh, third down play? I would say this one is going to be the one play that perhaps Chuck Knox and company put in for this particular game. Rusty Jackson trying to keep hands and kicking leg warm. As Chuck Knox is going to have to decide whether he wants Tom Dempsey or whether he wants Rusty Jackson. What he wants most of all, of course, is a first down. Third and nine. Blitz. Look out. Hilgenberg and Hayden never saw him coming. It'll have to be Rusty Jackson now. It was Hilgenberg two years ago that made the interception in the end zone that sent the Rams back disappointed. That is not Wally Hilgenberg. Here this it is. is. Watch to the right of your screen. Rusty Jackson. Standing back at the 42-yard line. This time they don't try to block it. And Jackson goes for the sideline. Leonard Willis on the far side of the field. Stopped at the 20. Carl Eckern. The first guy down as Bud Grant has cause to worry and also cause to be happy at the moment. Because we have 6.53 left to play. And his club, the Minnesota Vikings, leads the Los Angeles Rams 17-13. Beginning Sunday, January 16th, Challenge of the Sexes returns with all sorts of new and exciting challenges. This is only a smattering of the action you'll be seeing on Challenge of the Sexes, beginning Sunday, January 16th. The entire crowd, a standing ovation, standing encouragement, whatever you'd like to call it. They're all Minnesota fans, perhaps a few exceptions. The Minnesota offensive unit gives the ball to Chuck Foreman. And Foreman rolls for about eight or nine on his own. Stopped by Simpson. And that brings him back up again. Chuck Foreman, you're looking right through the goalpost from the end zone. A good block by Miller on the outside. He's hard to tackle. <laughs> I'll say he is. At the bottom of your picture, 
probably right now the most important statistic in this contest. The time remaining. Now six minutes, ten seconds. Second and two. Miller has the Minnesota first down. The entire defensive line of the Rams converged on Robert Miller, but he got enough to make him move the chain. And the clock is running, and Fran Tarkita's arm is not so sound. A big, big first down. Fran Tarkenton. Merlin Olson. Took a little late knee to the head. The clock continues. First down, Minnesota. Robert Miller gets the call, and Olson leads the Ram charge, along with Larry Brooks and the rest of them. I suddenly just thought of the Cowboys and Indians watching this, the Redskins, Washington, and the Dallas Cowboys, and these are the two teams that put them at home today. They both had good years, too. Chuck Knox. Watching the clock now go under five minutes. 17-13 Minnesota. Just exactly the kind of finish that we expected. Parkinson gives to Foreman. Oh. Foreman can find nothing this time. Jack Reynolds and Isaiah Robertson. The linebackers converge on number 44. It's incredible how evenly matched these two teams are. The Rams have been here been coming to Minnesota for a long time. They've only won once. A long time ago. 1968. Bob Grimm just replaced Robert Miller. So they have an extra wide receiver. And Fran must show, throw maybe the short pattern. Grimm set up in the backfield. And I comes out. Intended for him. Monty Jackson was the guy who was close. But the Vikings are going to have to punt. It'll be Neil Claybo. And now the pressure comes on him. Yes, let's watch Neil Claybo this time. The Rams got fairly close trying to block the last one, but he's had great hang time. He has been very cool, and he is now under pressure. The guy snapping is also under pressure, and that is Doug Dummler in this case. Cullen Bryant, alone and deep for the Rams at the 22. 17-13 the score. The Rams will get the football with about four minutes left to play. They didn't get it. Claybo hangs it. Cullen fields it. Cullen Bryant broke away from a couple. Slipped down on that frozen part of the field. 37-yard line is where the Rams take over. Watch the rush. Here's what Claybo must have felt on the ground. Simpson. On New Year's Day at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, CBS Sports presents the Cotton Bowl. The Terrapins of Maryland against the Houston Cougars. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And then January the 2nd, next Sunday at 3 o'clock, Texas A&M, the Aggies against Florida. Ron Jesse goes in motion to the right. Hayden throwing for Jackson. He caught it. Incomplete, out of bounds. He didn't get him down. Bobby Bryant on the cover. Sutherland put a big rush on young Hayden, who didn't get the ch a chance to really throw the ball well. Watch the roll. Now he's thinking he's getting good protection. McCutcheon picks up for him. And watch him. He just has to throw it and then duck. And the ball fluttered. And Jackson still caught it, but not in the playing field. And the clock stops with 3.49 left to play. 17-13, Minnesota leads Los Angeles. Second and 10. The give is to Capoletti. And Capoletti oh. struggles for a first down Los Angeles. Carrying Paul Krause with him. And Wally Hilgenberg, too. Watch the blocking. Here's Capoletti. And you're going to start with the defense. Hilgenberg moving in. That's Klein, a super blocking tight end. Rolls him out, but Wally won't quit. And neither does Capaletti. 
A most unusual call on second and ten. Nevertheless, very successful. Here's a funny-looking formation for Los Angeles. Hayden drops back. And Hayden fires outside. Knocked down. Nate Wright intended for Harold Jackson. Nate Wright was the defender, of course. Jackson is number 29. Nate Wright has always been Mr. Clutch up here. He's one of the fellows you don't readily identify as a super player, but he's made some really great plays for a long time. Three minutes and four seconds left to play in the NFC Championship. The winner, of course, goes to the Super Bowl against either Pittsburgh or Oakland. Don't forget Ron Jesse, number 81. Second and ten. Jesse is left. Jackson is right. Protection is adequate. Capaletti has the reception. Don Capaletti. Nudged out of bounds inside the 40 at about the 39. Jeff Wright knocked him out, but it's another Los Angeles first down. This is a trailer now to the right part of your screen. They'll run Jesse down on a deep sideline and put Capaletti right in his way. It did open up because they were worried about Jesse like we were. Bobby Bryant was back with Jesse. Less than three, 257 to be exact, 17-13 the score super football game and a cold afternoon in Minnesota the blitz is on this time they pick it up it's not intended for Jackson almost intercepted by Nate Wright almost picked off and the fans think that Harold Jackson interfered with the defender he might have his job is to catch it or keep the other guy from catching it the ball is not overthrown at all. Super position by the defender. And a heck of a job by Harold Jackson. That was well done. The ball popped out before they ever hit the ground. Jackson just making his way back to the huddle. 249 left to play. He's so tough, he's still a bachelor in Southern California. Harold Jackson to me. Yes. Now that is tough. <laughs> took a minute for that to sink in, but on second down. Again the blitz. Bobby Bryant. The defender, the pass intended for Ron Jesse. Good play by Bryant, who used the sidelines. The ball was underthrown and a little bit behind Ron Jesse. Watch when he has to go back and up. And Bryant was there then. Box stopped with 245 left to play. And Ooh. they're not thinking about a field goal by Tom Dempsey, the record holder, or anything. They need more than four. Of immediate concern, of course, is the first down. Right now, it's third and ten. No blitz this time. Marshall, the rusher. Capaletti had it, dropped it. Wally Hilgenberg on uh, the coverage. Jim Marshall put the heat on Pat Hayden. I don't know how Hayden threw it at all. Here's Capaletti checking out across the center of the watching fan right back inside, away from the linebacker. And Hayden right now is all wrapped up in the arms of Jim Marshall. From another angle, all here's right. that same play. Watch number 70 come from the right. And Hayden threw dart with it. I believe the Rams took this time out. Pat Hayden has gone over to the sideline to talk to Kenny Meyer, the assistant coach closest to you. And Chuck Knox behind him. 240 on the scoreboard clock. Fourth and 10. Los Angeles used a timeout. That's been confirmed now. So the Rams have two left. The Vikings have three. Fourth and ten. And if they can get a first down, they also have the two-minute timeout that will automatically take place. But right now, you're right. The hardest thing to do sometimes is to try to get ten yards when the defense will take that away. So perhaps when you go for 25 yards in this situation, it might be easier to get, I know it sounds weird, than ten yards. Herb Cross 
down on the sideline with Brent Musburger, and they'll be fanning out into the locker rooms after this contest is over. Hurst not going to wear that hat into the locker room. Those players will kid him right out of there. There's a nice hello, and there's the Christmas tree inside the Viking locker room. Of course, the Rams spent Christmas Eve and Christmas Day yesterday here in Minnesota, and away from home. And they didn't mind either. That's the Los Angeles locker room. Right now it's quiet, and one of them's going to be quiet when this contest is over. 2.40 left to play. Fourth down. Fourth and ten. Might as well be fourth and goal. Might as well be anything. This is the play. Aiden is deep. The Vikings are blitzing. Deep intended for Jesse. Picked off by Bobby Bryant. Bryant is up and at the 20. Bryant at the 25. Doug France is the guy who stopped him. It looked like Jesse was open. The ball hung, and Bryant got there. Bobby Bryant was covering Harold Jackson on a short out. He was supposed to be occupied, and Bryant left his man and went inside to pick off a ball that had touchdown written all over. Watch Jesse. He's open, but Bryant will come to the left center. Watch. And his man is open, and Jesse's closed. It was fourth down, and you might think about the fact that perhaps Bryant would have picked up more yardage. In act actuality, Minnesota would have had better field position if he had just knocked it down instead of intercepting. You don't think about those things at a time like that, though. Minnesota football, 228, Chuck Foreman, the ball carrier. Foreman breaks a couple and slithers to the outside. Monty Jackson and Bill Simpson made the tackle, and Merlin Olson quickly called a Ram timeout. 218 left in this season for one of these teams. In 18 seconds, the Rams would have gotten a timeout anyway. That's a valuable timeout. Similar to that situation that occurred in Dallas last week. Only Dallas called a timeout with two seconds to go before the two-minute warning. That was a week ago, wasn't it? Seems like, uh, well, one good game after another. And Patrick, you and I have been involved in so many, and we're so fortunate. And Isn't that the truth? Oh. But Grant, with his troops gathered round and his assistants. They want to they leave Minnesota. And the Rams have to go back to California, whether they win or whether they lose. A Minnesota touchdown, a 90-yard run by Bobby Bryant after he picked up a blocked field goal. A field goal of 25 yards by Fred Cox. And a one-yard run by Chuck Foreman after he had set it up with a 62-yard sprint. Ram touchdowns by McCutcheon and Jackson. With 2.18 left to play, Minnesota has a second down and four situation. Chuck Foreman again. Oh. Jack Reynolds leads that pack with Bill Simpson also around. And Freddie Dreyer left the line of scrimmage so close to the snap that nobody called it. But he, just, he really destroyed that play early. Rams call another timeout. And that should be all of them. Of course, the clock will stop in nine seconds for the two-minute notifications. Chuck Knox has used all of his timeout. Why is it the great pitchers or the great quarterbacks, when they have a sore arm or something, call some of their greatest games? And Fran talking in right now with a bad bone on that right arm, you know, the bad thrower. He has called a remarkably strong game by not throwing it as much as he normally would have. He is checked with Bud Grant now and is headed back for the huddle. Number 10. So many, many great years. So many records. Which he minimizes. He says all you got to do to set records is just stay healthy, which is quite an achievement in itself. Well, the Kofaxes and the Drysdales always threw their best games when they had a sore arm. Big Don Drysdale is here, by the way. 
sure is doing the Dram games on radio back to Los Angeles third and four and Tarkenton is going to throw or maybe Chuck Foreman Foreman breaks one breaks a couple Foreman down the sidelines is Chuck Foreman what an athlete this guy is first down Minnesota at the Ram 10 Monty Jackson finally got him out of bounds Foreman is still down he can take the rest of a, a week off as uh, long as he wants the catch was not easy the ball was thrown high he stretched it he caught it looks like he might have injured his back or he might just be out of breath but chuck foreman has put on some show today a minute 57 left to play the injury to chuck foreman doesn't appear to be serious he's walked across the field that's the scene in that Sports Deli, the bar in Los Angeles where they're still rooting for the Rams. Where's Paul Horning? I'm looking for Paul. I saw him in the background over there. You can write MVP on number 44's back. Sure can. The Vikings have a first down at the Ram 12. The running backs now, Miller and number 48, Sammy Johnson. Merlin Olsen on that last tackle. Here is that last play again, the pass completion from Tarkenton to Foreman. Watch Fran, he just barely gets it there. Watch the high throw. Full gallop sideways down the sideline. And now a little bit of an injury. Boy, that's frozen solid out there where he hit. That ground is really hard where he hit. Tarkenton breaks him out. Johnson and Miller, the running back. They lost the yard on that last play. It is Sammy Johnson trying to protect the football. The Rams, keep in mind, have used all of their timeouts. Merlin Olsen, Jack Youngblood, and Larry Brooks, the tackler. The one thing a great professional will not do in the huddle now, and I'm talking about Mick Tanglehoff, is say, hold on to the ball, don't fumble it. You don't mention it, but it's in everybody's mind on the other side of the line of scrimmage. As the clock continues to run, the crowd starts to come to its feet. They can see trip number four to the Super Bowl for their Vikings. 40 seconds left to play. Sammy Johnson. Johnson to the five. Johnson. Touchdown, Minnesota. Sammy Johnson carried Dave Elmendorf into the end zone and scored for the Vikings. Look at Youngblood right on the 15-yard line. He just moved. He looked like a statue. He just stood there with his hands on his hips. Here's the touchdown run by Sammy Johnson. What a team. You got to beat all 43-plus coaches. The city, Max Winter, Mike Lynn, you name him. Fred Cox ups the score to 24-13. The Vikings will play either Pittsburgh or Oakland in Pasadena. The Vikings are going to keep intact their record of never having lost an NFC championship game. And the Rams will go away from Minnesota again. Dejected. Fran Tarkington has 12 completions, 143 yards, and I'll guarantee you that number 10 will say this is the most satisfying game he ever quarterback. And how about number 44? Oh. Chuck Foreman, over 100 yards rushing, that clutch reception just a minute ago to set up the touchdown run by Sammy Johnson. And just shake it up, we just got word it is not a serious injury. Chuck Foreman hit on the sideline on that hard ground. Keep in mind that Brent Musburger and Irv Cross will be in the locker room. After this is over, Fred Cox hey! squibs it on the ground. Picked up by Rob Scribner. Scribner throws a lateral, intercepted by Matt Blair. Matt Blair has blocked a punt. Matt Blair has still got that football, and he's going to keep it. He had five fumbles. He's blocked kicks. He's intercepted passes. 59's done about everything you can do. Think he's not happy about it? Eight 
19 seconds left to play. Chuck Knox and the Los Angeles Rams see a long year of hard work winding down right now. Patrick, there aren't any losers in a game like this. I, I know they're winners, but there just aren't any losers. I mean that. Minnesota football, but this is all academic. Down goes Tarkenton. And the struggle ensues. And the clock is going to run out. It's going to be all over. Minnesota. Trip number four to the Super Bowl. Tempers are still flaring, but the clock is still running. This one's over. And the goal posts go down. Hold it, Mike. I believe that Grant almost smiled. Almost. There go the goal posts. There come the Vikings. The Vikings make that happy trip up that tunnel. Neil Armstrong, the assistant coach, comes by. Head man Bud Grant, followed by the rest of his team. And that Viking locker room is very, very happy. Justifiably so. The Viking fans are very, very happy. Justifiably so. 24-13, the final score. Minnesota defeats the Los Angeles Rams for the championship of the NFC. The NFL today will return after this word from your local station. It boggles the mind. I wouldn't say it's bedlam. I would say it's happiness. And happiness really in the Minnesota locker room. Not so happy in the Ram locker room. You can't put out as much as they have put out all year and not be down. Those people aren't down, but the goalposts almost are. Viking fans who have survived this cold day have been rewarded with a victory in another trip to the Super Bowl. Number four for them. Started back in July. Do not forget that. And Bud Grant does not have easy training sessions. Whether you're old or whether you're new, you work and you pay the price tremendously. Those goalposts are pretty hard to get down, aren't they? They tried to tear them down last week after the victory over Washington. The security people stopped them. This year, they said, what the heck? Hey. This Sunday. Let's go now to Brent Musburger. He's 70 years old today. Okay, we'll stay right here. All right, we are down in the victorious Minnesota Vikings locker room, Walla Hilgenberg. Big day for you. Super day for us. You know, we're going and we're happy and we're just thrilled. I got to say one thing. Today, my father's 70 years old, Curly Hilgenberg, Wilton Junction, Iowa. Happy birthday, Dad. All right. Okay. Now, listen, Wally, <laughs> when you stood Hayden up on the play when he was coming into the end zone in the first half, a big turnaround, that play for you. What were you trying to do on it? Uh, I, my thinking was two plays. Either they're going to die the halfback over or they're going to quarterback sneak Hayden over. I got up and tried to get in where I could get both of them and got a lucky hit on him. All right. Now, late in the game, Hayden's driving him again. It looks like they might pull it out you come on a blitz and you lower it we had a good call 40 blitz i'm coming from the outside nobody blocked me an easy hit and he never saw you coming I, at all i wanted the ball to pop loose so it'd lock it up but it didn't but you know good hit now listen you're one of the veterans on this team how does this squad compare with the other teams that have gone to the super bowls you know we, we're we're mellow we got a great blend we got old guys that got the stability we got the young guys that got the enthusiasm i feel like a young kid today because they turned me on and i'm happy all right wally thank you very much Let's now get the quarterback up here, Fran Tarkenton. Fran, congratulations. Thank You're going you, back again. Yeah, we're going back, Brent, and I want the whole world to know this time we're going to win it. Uh, i, I got to ask you, because there was so much speculation during the game by Brookie, who thought you were a little tentative from time to time. Did the arm bother you at all, Fran, particularly early in the game? No, my arm didn't bother me at all. My knee has been bothering me all week. I just, uh, it's not as strong as I'd like it to be, but... Uh, uh, it got through this game, and I'm sure by the Super Bowl it'll be very well. Now, we should clarify something about that knee. Is that an old injury, something that occurred in the Washington game, it's or what exactly did you get? same knee I got in the Washington game, and I went down into the second quarter, and uh, I didn't work much this week. We're trying to keep off of it and uh, keep the swelling down, but uh, it should be all right for the Super Bowl. Two great big plays with Chuck Foreman that you teamed up. Maybe you could run down the two early in the third quarter and late in the game. Well, late in the game, we had a rollout pass uh, trying to protect the ball, and Chuck came across the middle. He's actually the fourth receiver, if you will, on that type of thing, and he made the play and, uh, and, and really got us out of trouble. 
I think we should say something about the Rams defense the way they played. They gave you nothing but trouble too. The Ram defense is as good a defense as we've ever played and they always have been that. They were a great defense today and and their special teams got them in trouble and uh, finally uh, our offensive line did a, did a great job against them but uh, they're tough. All right Fran the NFL today will continue on CBS with Bud Grant the coach of the Minnesota Vikings in just a moment. The scene in Metropolitan Stadium as the goalposts go down outside and the winning coach Bud Grant inside. Congratulations, Bud. Well, thank you very much, Brent. Uh, feels particularly good because we beat a great football team. I think the Rams are a super team, and we felt that way going in, and we have even that much more respect for them now. Was McClanahan hurt, or did you just make a decision to go more with Miller in this game? No, they've played interchangeably, and I uh, uh, we thought we might have to throw the ball a little bit more. and. Uh, Robert has done a good job in that department, but they're interchangeable. There's not much to choose, and you saw what Sammy Johnson can do late in the game also. How concerned were you, Bud, when the Rams began to take over and momentum seemed to be rolling in their direction? Oh, I think you're concerned. That's why uh, uh, this is such a tough business, but, uh, we, you know, a lot of character on this ball club, as there was in theirs. They could have surrendered early, too, and they didn't, and I didn't think our team was going to either, and it, we got some big plays at the end that made the difference. Bud, now it's the Super Bowl. You have been there, of course, in the past, but you've been unable to come away with a win. And I've got to believe, deep down in your mind, you want this one coming up. Why well, this team found a lot of character late in the season. Uh, uh, they've got a new dimension. They've got emotion now, and uh, maybe this is our year. Why do they have emotion all of a sudden, Bud? Well, it's not all of a sudden, but it's maybe been a little dormant. Uh, uh, it just came to the surface. Uh, a lot of these players felt that we had to have a new dimension, and they came up with emotion, so I'll buy it. All right. Congratulations, Bud Grant. Thank you. Right now, we'll be back with Chuck Foreman as the NFL today continues on CBS in just a moment. And the celebration goes on outside as the goalposts come down. Inside with me, Ahmad Rashad and Chuck Foreman. Ahmad, I hear that one O.J. Simpson gave you a phone call last night. Talked to him yesterday, told him I'd see him today because they'd have the red light on in our room. <laughs> all right, Chuck. Listen, some job. How about the injury now? Were you badly banged no, up at just, all? Just uh, the wind knocked out of me. I, I'm okay. All right. Early in the third quarter, I understand our director, Sandy Grossman, has got a couple of plays here from the second half, and you go ahead and take over. Oh, uh, this is... Um, uh, it looks like this must be the pass play. And uh, what, what it is, just me one-on-one -on -one with the linebackers, and I was able to outmaneuver uh, uh, Robert uh, Robinson and uh, Jack uh, Reynolds and uh, just got around them and went down the sideline. And, of course, uh, I'm not a 9-3 sprinter, and I, was, I, was, I got caught. What a play that was because the Rams now. Here's the other run. Well, this is uh, what, what it was was an outside call. Francis Audible to an inside play, which was a cross block between Ed White and... Uh, of Ryan Year and I was able to outmaneuver the guys again and get in the backfield and uh, of course uh, Perry I think came from uh, over on the other side of the field I didn't see him and uh, of course uh, he caught me and I should have turned it on a little bit but uh, well we got in anyway so and he dove for me here and uh, he made a great tackle a great on that play. Chuck. great play by him and uh, of course we played a great defensive team and there uh, are the numbers big guy right. congratulations 118 76 194 and I understand you don't like cold weather very well. No, I went to school to get out of the cold weather, but I'm back up here, but I'm a winner now. We never won in college, and I'm just happy to be here with the Minnesota Vikings. Do you really think that Bud Grant will give you heat warmers if you go all the way and win the Super Bowl for the sidelines next year? Well, it really doesn't matter. We can play in cold or warm. It's just a matter of it's just a state of mind. All right, congratulations, Chuck. Right now, I want to go across to the Los Angeles Rams locker room. Irv Cross is with their coach, Chuck Knox. Irv? Brent, obviously, it's a pretty sad moment here in the Ram locker room. And Coach Knox, your club had a great year, obviously. You came in here with every intention of winning this thing, but it got away from you. Well, it certainly did. We kind of took ourselves out of it early. Uh, we had a couple mistakes in our kicking game that really hurt us. And, of course, that first uh, field goal that we went for down there on the one-foot line or two-foot line and got it blocked, and they were able to run 99 yards for a touchdown, uh, it really hurt us. You know, there would be a lot of second guessing about that play. I looked at it myself and said, gee, when you're that deep, you want to go for it. If you miss it, your defense is still in good position to hold them down there. If you had it to do again, what would you do? Well, you know, hindsight's always 20-20. We played them uh, here um, earlier. We went for it on fourth down down there and, and didn't make it. And we thought that uh, we would take uh, three points uh, today and uh, hoped uh, that our defense uh, could uh, contain them and slow them down. But we wanted to get some points on the board. We'd driven all the way down there, and we didn't want to come up and take a chance on fourth down and um, come up uh, empty-handed. But 
it's like anything else that uh, you do in football. Uh, the only time that uh, it's really good is when it works. And uh, we lined up for a field goal to attempt and uh, had a malfunction in our blocking and uh, got it blocked, and they ran it down for a touchdown. So now it looks like the call would have been to go for, it, for the touchdown. Coach, you know, we haven't seen the final stats yet, but it appears to me that the Rams dominated this ball game. He did everything he wanted to do, except the turnovers caught up with you in the first half. Well, we had some turnovers. We had uh, uh, a punt blocked. We had uh, another uh, snap to our punter, perfect snap that uh, our punter dropped. Uh, we had a number of things that uh, happened to us in our kicking game that really hurt you, hurt us. And uh, anytime you're in a big ball game and your kicking game doesn't function real well, why uh, you, you're going to be in trouble. But uh, I was proud of the way our team battled back uh, in that second half, and uh, I thought that we had the momentum that swung there uh, at, at one point, and I uh, thought that we were going to come back and uh, get the one touchdown uh, that uh, we needed. But unfortunately, we didn't, and uh, got to give the Minnesota Vikings credit. Uh, they, uh, they played a good football game, and I want to wish Bud Grant and the Minnesota Vikings best of luck in the Super Bowl. Coach, that's a great gesture, and I want to say thank you for all the pleasure you've given football fans across America. The Rams and Chuck Knox are first class, too. Let's go back to Brent Musburger in the Minnesota Viking locker room. All right, Eric, thank you very much. We'll be back with Bobby Bryant right now. Let's go out to Los Angeles, and here's Paul Horning. Brent, as you can well imagine, there's not too many happy Ram fans around here right now. Our thanks go to Bud Frillo and the management. I think a toast is in order. The Rams have had a good year, and uh, they, they'll come back next year, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people here congratulate the Minnesota Vikings on a big win today, going to the Super Bowl. Number 74. Back now back to Minnesota. All right, I'm going to be back with this gentleman, Bobby Bryant, in just a moment as the NFL Today continues on CBS. Mission completed as the goalposts have fallen outside. And I'll tell you, a guy with two of the biggest plays in this game, number 20, Bobby Bryant. Bobby, first, let's talk about the block field goal in the first half. Well, Brent, uh, Nate Allen did a super job. He came from the right side and blocked it clean. Uh, I was coming from the left side. It took one bounce right to me, and I just kept running and uh, nothing but wide open spaces. I didn't know if I could run that far, but uh, fortunately I did, and it was a great feeling. I don't know if everyone is familiar with your story. The broken arm, missing the preseason, didn't play much at all the first couple of games of the regular season, and then back you come. And now we're in the championship, and it is the fourth quarter. And the Los Angeles Rams have got a chance to pull it out. They want Jesse to go down, and Bobby Bryant is there. Well, Jesse came from the other side. Uh, Nate Wright was covering him, and I was covering Harold Jackson on the right side, and they both ran deep patterns down the middle, and I was able to uh, see the ball thrown and get in front of Jesse and catch it. Bobby, any thoughts Good about minute. the Super Bowl? No, I'm just happy we're going to be there. It uh, doesn't matter if it's Pittsburgh or Oakland, but uh, I'm glad the Vikings are going to be there. Bobby, congratulations, and congratulations to all the members of the Minnesota Vikings, a class organization. Right now, for a few final words, let's go to Jack Whitaker. Thank you, Brent. What we did, I guess, today was relearn some old adages. You never give the Minnesota Vikings a break. You never give them a 10-0 lead. And despite that, the Rams almost overcame that double jeopardy. The Rams, as we all know, are a fine team, a time, uh, team with deep character, and if not the best defense in professional football, certainly there is none better. They've brought drama back to the punting game, and of course over the season they're going to correct that. And one has a very strong feeling that the Rams will be back in the playoffs next year. This Viking team becomes the first team to go to the Super Bowl for the fourth time. And I think it's the best Viking team to go. It's more emotionally alive, it's got more talent, it's got a marvelous blend of youth and experience. And whether or not they can handle Pittsburgh or Oakland, we don't know yet but it will be the best Viking addition to go to the Super Bowl. Here's Tom Brookshire and Pat Summerall. Thank you very much, Jack. You know, all year long, Thomas, we've been trying to get Phyllis away from Irv and Brent, and now we finally got her. What do you think? Well, it's, a, it's sort of a sad thing for me. The, the victors always have the egos that take care of it, and the Vikings will go on and do a great job. I have great empathy for the, the Rams right now, going back thinking that they didn't quite do it. And, uh, I'm sort of, it's over, and it's a great football game, and it's a pleasure to be here. It sure is. Phyllis, how about your final Well, thoughts? I was just going to say the weather certainly has been cold here. You two have done a terrific job, but when it's a good game like we saw today, you don't feel the cold at all. You're into the game because you know each team is plugging away. And you know the Tarkington Foreman team is, is dynamic, but you I two think. together are out of sight. I want you to know that. My favorite. Are you sorry the season's over? I certainly am. I've had a marvelous time, but we'll see everybody next year. It's been a great year for CBS, the NFL. We all wish you a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hope everything works out just as good for you as it has for us. So for Phyllis George, Tom Brookshire, Herb Cross, Brent Musburger, 
Jack Whitaker, this is Pat Summerall saying so long from Bloomington, Minnesota. The NFL Today has been sponsored by Ford and your local Ford dealer, who say when America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Sears die-hard batteries with starting power you can count on. Allstate Insurance Company, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. The NFL Today has been a presentation of CBS Sports. It boggles the mind. Babe Ruth made as much as the President of the United States. For today's superstars, that's little more than pocket money. Watch 60 Minutes tonight on CBS.